The name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich, and I'm going to be your host. Tonight I have a very, very, very special guest. I've known this young man for, uh, since 2012, but he's been associated with LMC TV since 2010. He, uh, he was a camera person, and he did many things in the, studio, in the old LMC studios. And uh, for me, for The Way to Go and some other shows that I worked on. And uh, my father was always amazed by him and, and loved him. He was, he, and uh, I think the feeling was mutual, I got to tell you. But, um, and uh, I worked on his projects, he worked on my projects, and I'm so happy that he's in the studio today. And his name is Andre Gordon. Welcome to the show, Andre. Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you. I mean, it's yeah. so great to be in the studio with you again. Yeah, this is my fourth appearance on The Way You Go. Wow. Yeah, I was looking back on the YouTube channel earlier today. Yeah, I mean, you were how young were you the first time around? Do you remember? I mean, I, I think I had three appearances from like when I was eighteen to nineteen. We we talked mostly about the the season two of premiere of The Rascal at that at that time. So, how did you initially? Um, find out about LMC TV uh, at the time yeah. LMC TV yeah M when when I was 10 years old uh, my mom and I were at one of the Mar Maranek Avenue block parties and we came upon the booth that LMC TV had which was manned by Eric Lewis and Christina and it was they had the green screen set up where you could they would make a video and make it look like you were flying down Mamanic Avenue. So I had, before that, I had started getting into like doing home videos and some little things here and there. So I had like an interest in filmmaking. So of course, I got online and I laid down on the thing and I did the video. And we took their information and they said, oh yeah, he's. If he's 10 years old, he's old enough to start volunteering. Wow. So I, I got uh, offered to do a, a, an event at Dance Cavis um, with uh, another volunteer at the time. We were paired together, mm -hmm. and that was my first experience working so something. Dance, dance Elite? Dance Cavis uh, by, the, by the train station. They oh. were doing like a dance-a-thon. So we, oh. we, were film, we were filming the, the event and it, cool. some interviews. I think my daughter went, studied there you know, with, the, with those dancers at one point. But yeah. So um, that was, I, I do know what, I mean, uh, you didn't do it alone. You had your parents. I mean, your parents yeah. were totally supportive. And uh, I know that because I see them picking you up yeah. and uh, going back and forth from the studio. So, uh, so you started, did you have to take classes to learn uh, how to use the cameras? Because you were a camera, you used the cameras. Yeah. Well, it, well th that first event was like a field event. So we were using like the the, the cameras that we would take out. Right. Um, it was more just like, I like Dina, I think, I, I'm pretty, it, might, it was probably Dina. Uh, I don't remember, it was so long ago. Right. It, one of the staff It people, was always Dina. It was, it was usually <laughs> Dina. But at that point, one of the staff people, whoever, it was, if it was Dina or Christine at the time, right. they talked me through how to use the camera. Right. And then I was working with the other volunteer on filming the event and taking turns, getting different shots and interviewing the people. And a, subsequently, a, at the LMC Awards that following year, we actually won... Uh, best community event videography for that first event that I ever filmed. Interesting. I think you uh, didn't. You bring. Uh, yeah, I, 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 a I, mean, photo? I probably brought one. I, I think I brought two photos of me at yeah. that a, at that award night. Yeah. So uh, we're going to share those. Yeah, I, yeah. If, if they're if they can be brought up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was it, it was re it was really special to have it be my first thing that I ever filmed at like, right. and just. The, because that that was my first time being honored in that way for, like, something. It wasn't creative. the last, that's for sure. No, like th I think I I think I've gotten five, L five different awards over the time that I've worked at LMC. Yeah, so I started. Um, I, I also was at an event. I think I went to like the picnic, the LMC TV picnic, hmm. in tw 2012, and my father, my father-in-law, used to do the way to go. That that's that's where the show originated. And I, I spoke to Eric at the time, who was the uh, 
he was the Matt back then, mm. the uh, director. Yep. And I, I asked him, you know, I'd like, I have an idea of doing a show, you know. Basically, initially I thought I was going to do it differently, but it was going to be about filmmakers, if I can, and have all the actors and directors that I worked with uh, be on the show. And he said, sure. I said, wow. So um, I must have been in the studio, I don't even know if it was the first time or the second time, but you were the camera person. Mm. And, uh, and I just remember, again, how, how amazed my father was. Uh, when, when he'd see young, young you, you and some of your friends also yeah. were, were doing uh, studio work. Did you like working in the studio? Yeah, I, I, over the time that I worked at LMC, I did probably every job possible in the studio. And the, the experience of, of doing that was just so special and something that you couldn't get anywhere else besides LMC. Right. And it, I really, I think it, it, being at LMC definitely shaped who I am today. And also the pizza and the soda. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> well, yeah I don't drink soda, but the pizza, I know, the but, pizza. The, but, the, but the pizza was always good. Yeah, your, your, your parents raised you smart enough not to drink soda. Yeah. I have all kinds of uh, tooth issues as a result of the sweet tooth that I mm. had. But um, I just also, as, as time went on, was it, uh, didn't you win like a national award? It, uh, I think it was 2014 or 2015, we did a, t uh, uh, um, a Lego stop motion uh, show about the history of like the sound shore. And, and you did that with Dina or was it? Uh, I, I collaborated with Dina because we were both like into Legos at the time. And I had a lot of sets that were just sitting around my house. So she was like, let's do a show and incorporate all like the cool Lego sets that, that I had. Um, and we subsequently won a national award for, I think it was for best children's program. What, what did that feel like winning a national award? I mean, that's not, I mean, it's one thing and it's a great honor because I have a couple yes. for The Way to Go and for Scriptless, the two shows I did, the, the ones that are internal, you know, but it's like, it's a it's a shorter uh, it's a smaller fishbowl, yeah. but to win a national award it, it with was, you and Dina, it, it was really really cool. I I it came very close to going to the like the award ceremony, but I just I wasn't gonna at 15 years old be able to fly to oh. wherever it well, was being if, held. But I think if you really wanted to, your I, parents I, would have done it. I, I know your parents. Maybe maybe. We, but it, it that was getting in the mail was cool enough. But I will say that you have remarkable parents in terms of the way they've uh, supported you in every aspect, it seems, right? Yes. I, from, like, the moment we met Christina and Eric on the avenue right. to, like, they, being, they were up late helping me build sets for the Rascal, like, yeah. the, like everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the Rascal? Maybe you could talk about that show. I, well, I, the Rascal was the series that I produced um, at LMC. When I was starting when I was from when I was 14, wow. and I worked on it for about five and a half years from start to finish. Who's your collaborator? There was a collaborator. I, I it, 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 me and uh, Felix Giordano co-created the concept for the show. Right. But I wrote like, like the whole storyline. Well, you didn't just write it; you shot it. I, yeah, I filmed you it. You filmed it. Your father was on the set filming. Yeah, my, yeah, my <laughs> dad. My, yeah, home. my dad played a, a police officer for right. some of the scenes. But I, yeah, I did costume sets, everything. So what? What? What is the show? I mean, uh, maybe one day they'll yeah. throw it back on TV on maybe, LMC TV. Maybe I think I think it probably still airs every Halloween. That's but good. Um, I mean, of course, hey, you were one of right. Like, I was one of like, the, the, four, the, the four stars. <laughs> Um, like the, you know, the, the main, a the main four people, right, the <laughs> yeah. people who continued. Yeah. But uh, what, what was the, what was it about? Uh, it was, um, you're m making me think now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I, I, I haven't given this speech in a long time. It, it was, a an, an action drama thriller about, um, um, uh, well, it starts off with a murder. And the police are trying to solve the murder and find out who did it, and they find out that there were some like supernatural circumstances around that around the death, and it, it turns into a whole journey of that was many a lot of fun. I mean, turns. in a little while, we'll show some outtakes from the show. Yeah, we, can, we have some clips we can show uh, because uh, we did have fun on the set. Yeah, but um, the the thing I was always amazed at were the special effects that you did. How did how did you do those special effects? I, well, I, I knew I, I for the for the way that I wanted the show to look, 
I knew there was going to have to be some 3D animation and things that typically would take like years to perfect. Um, And my mom, my parents actually both, they paid for a an animation teacher to teach me like the basics of like and the support from parents is the most important thing. Yeah. That's it. And the, all so that I, so that I could just create this thing that I wanted to create. Um, and a, the, the effects aren't perfect. They were great but, though. But for, for <laughs> someone who, for 14 someone, years old, for, for 14 <laughs> years old and, and I will say they did improve in the second season. So yeah. I, they, my, my late nights in the beginning of my sophomore year of college, being up till like two o'clock in the morning, a- 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 animating smoke for so, the so season two premiere. So you went from fourteen till junior year of college. Uh, sophomore year. So sophomore I, I, year. I, the sh- the season two, the final season premiered like two weeks into when I was in, uh, my so junior. So you really year, my dedicated to this project. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, once I started, I'm like, I need to see it through to the end. Right. And obviously, I had, I, I always have other ideas, and I had ideas beyond what we had, uh, what we had filmed had it been ha- happened in a more condensed timeline but the, there's always yeah, you never know what could happen in the future maybe maybe we'll That's do maybe I, we'll do a reboot that would be nice <laughs> or or something even new yeah or a, a new show right yeah it's amazing though like uh i mean i took a 20 year uh hiatus from working in hollywood to starting again in in uh in both you know LMC TV and some other projects that started me up i love it so um when did you, I mean, do you still do any uh, film stuff? I mean, I, I have had a, a concept for a new show since, like, The Rascal ended. Right. Um, I have some some scripts that were written, but I, I'm working full time, and you know right. how hard it is to manage I know, but I have schedule. a feeling, I have a feeling that, because I also worked full time for, like, 40 yeah. years, but I always had the way to go. But, it, you know, I mean... I needed it, and maybe yeah. that you know, maybe down the line when you're a little bit older and you realize that, yeah. all of a sudden you're missing something that's part, something that yeah. you love to do. And I know you love it because yeah, well, you wouldn't have done it so long yeah. if you didn't love it. Hey, my long-term life goals is also always to go back to film one day. Yeah, you and, once and talked about making a stu- having a yeah, studio. I, I, I would I would like to do it professionally one day, but hey, for right now. I, so, I'm happy. So uh, actually, maybe uh, if we could share a little bit of the video of the the backstage uh, stuff from, uh, unless they already did it, I can't tell. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, so, I, well, yeah whatever. Whatever, com- up, whatever, whatever, whatever comes up will come up. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, um, okay, so you went to college. What college did you go to? I went to Kane University in Union, New Jersey. Right. Um, and I, study, I have my BFA in interior design. Cool. So um, my wife and I actually, we were... Uh, I think we were going to, I forgot exactly why, but we, we went, we actually stopped off at Kane on the way to a, a place that we were going on vacation. I think I remember you telling me that. And we actually looked at like some of the old houses that, are, you know, yeah. are, uh, so, who's like the famous people? I mean, Kane was, a, he's actually re- re- related to the governor, right? The old, the, the old governor of, uh, of Jersey? You don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but, but it was like like very political family that, that, yeah. that family and we went and we uh, you know on the way we said you know I said hey that's where Andre goes to yeah. college it, they, they did have like the Liberty Hall museum that's it Liberty Hall that's yeah it. which is like the, they, the a more like older buildings on campus right so um, did, did were you happy at, was it a good school yeah I, I oh, mean, what, was the, what was the school that you went to in, in, in our area um, oh the, well I went to high school at Thornton Donovan that's in it, New that's Rochelle it, right and we filmed much of the rascal a, at Thornton at my high that school. That was some school. I mean, it was fun filming there, and, and you had access. Yeah. One thing I think maybe because you're such a good guy, they gave you access. I mean, I yeah. don't know if they give access to it just anyone. No, I mean, I, I had a good relationship with the headmaster right. um, there, and he would let me come on weekends because he, he was always there, right. and there was always someone in the building. Right. So they would let me they'd go. It and was fun, especially when I was playing the the, uh, the scientist or whatever I yeah. was, and they had the skeleton in the background. Yeah, in the, in the <laughs> science lab. Yeah. yeah, it was funny. Uh, so tell me a little bit about Kane. Um, I mean, I... I, I, I toured several schools, right. I, but there was just something about the feeling of the campus, and I think and uh, it's beautiful campus. It was a beautiful campus, and also the, obviously the proximity to New York City and to be able to come home 
was something that was important to me. How were the prof- I mean, the, the did you feel? I mean, yeah. the, the the classes. The, yeah, the, the professors were great. Everybody. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, really. I felt like I was getting a good education there. And you did obviously because as soon as you graduated, didn't you, you, you got yeah, a job? Yeah, I, I, I was. I, I had the job offer before I, before graduation. Right. Um, do you think that? You'll, you know, I mean, this is this is what you plan to do for the rest of your life until you. Hey, hey, no, not, not the rest <laughs> of my life. Hey, 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 so the, yeah, hey, you don't plan your life. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm happy doing it for right now, but right. There, there's always there's always beyond. Right, but I'm sure this will help you in uh, set management. As a matter yeah. of fact, if we have a, a little shot of a couple of seconds of the set yeah, behind have, the scenes, yeah, I have of, some, yeah, there's, I brought Rascal. a clip. Yeah, we I brought show some that clips while of, we're talking. Yeah, um, but you and your dad. Put the set together. Yeah, right? I mean it was crazy. Yeah, it, it, it was. It, that was the old studio, the, the real old studio. It, oh well, I I film. We filmed some stuff with a set at the studio, at what they called Studio Two, which was on Library Lane. Right, that's the one I was. Reading. Um, and then for that was, we probably think we filmed that in like 2017. I remember that. Yeah. And then, like when we were filming like the final final episodes, I built some sets. I built I built a set at the the studio at Town Center. Right. Uh, you were in those scenes. No. I built like a train car set there. Cool. And then the the one that we have the footage of I built. Um, it was the villains underground lair, and I we actually filmed that at in the at the United Methodist Church across from right. like where the diner is right. in like their like community room. Right. And I I built the whole set in the morning and we were there late tearing it down at night God. it was it you was, was so wild. committed to that project yeah i mean but i know how i know that feeling too even with scriptless yeah. i was like living all i could think of is like the next what we're yeah. gonna do the next episode yeah. you know? hey the funny thing about the set that i built there hey, you were supposed to be in that scene what? but you weren't i don't think you were available for filming that day uh-huh. so i had i wrote in a line about why you weren't there <laughs> <laughs> oh, that stinks. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, because you know, it's these are historic things. Yeah. Right? I mean, this is this is the. It's just paper and cardboard. But it's, but the thing is, there's always it's interesting. This whole thing about like, there have been times in my life with acting, I thought it was going to be over, you know, and then it, then all of a sudden, you know, if you really want to do it, there's always a way to do what you really want to do in life. Yeah. So tell me about your job. I mean, what what do you, what are you doing in terms of, what does your job entail? Hey, well, a. Hey, as I said, I graduated with a BFA in interior design. Right. Uh, my job that I have now, I am working as a designer for a commercial furniture dealer. Right. So I do layouts for offices and uh, colleges, and it's we're, we focus mainly on just like the the furniture. It's not we don't do the floors. We don't so do the walls. So you create different types of furniture. Or you, it, you, it, we you? we have our furniture vendors that right. we sell to our clients. Okay. Hey, hey, we we actually sell the couch that I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> it's from from one of our from one of our vendors. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. So if if you guys want to hit up commercial <laughs> furniture interior, I can get you this couch. <laughs> so what what is what is, you know, what does tomorrow look like? Um. I I mean I'm I'm happy doing what I'm doing right now. Right. Um. But yeah. in 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 your like what. Where you are now, yeah. is there opportunities to for advancement or things like that? Yes, I, I, at the time, currently I'm still a, technically a junior designer, right. and so there's definitely there's the tiers of the designers. So what? What I mean, as you go up, what does it? What does it mean when? You, is it? What's the top tier? It, there, there's design. There's junior designer, then just designer, then senior designers. Right. So it, it just it depends on just your. A, the time you've been working there. So, as a junior designer, set. do you work under a senior designer, or how does it work? Or do you have your own a, projects? A, we we all do the same. Like we all have the same types of projects. Some of them are just bigger than others. Right. It's really, a, a, they they want everybody to be have ownership over their projects, which is something I love about this company right. because you don't get that in like a lot of design firms. Like my projects are like my own, right. and I'm I'm working with the project manager. Do you have a specialty in terms of the projects that you work on, or is it? Um... A lot of times they will keep certain clients with with certain designers. Right. I do a lot of work with Toro University. Oh, I I know. Yeah, right. um, I've done many projects for them. Um, 
and I've I, I when I started out, I did a lot. I did several uh, law firms. So what's uh, it offices. like when you go to like let's say you do you know you're working with them. You, you know, I guess you put you put it on paper how it's going to look, and then you go there afterwards, and there it is. I mean, what what is it like a sense of what kind of sense of fulfillment do you have? When I you're I did get to go see one of my projects at um, their uh, campus in Valhalla. Yeah, uh, I did a, a, the student lounge there. And I was going there to tour for another project, but I got to see the completed project, and it was really, really cool. Right. Because like I'm, I'm behind my desk at my computer most days, right. so when I actually get to see, I, I love doing showroom tours. I love like seeing what we sell. Yeah. I'm a very hands-on, very visual person. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I like to be like, like if 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 they would let me go in and build the furniture myself, I would, I would do it. Right. <laughs> um, um, but like I do really love seeing the things in real life. Are you satisfied with the people that uh, you uh, get to, to build the furniture for you? Or, or, you know? yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't manage that side of the, the job, but okay. we have a, we outsource to wonderful companies and we, we, all, we very rarely have a, we, we, we always have like we have a good product that okay, so on the other I'll, side. I'll, I'll switch it a little bit. Uh, so tell me about Broadway a little bit, because yes. I know you have a love for Broadway. And you know what? I have a love for Broadway, too. Yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, and having a friend who was on Broadway, my friend Brandon, who was on, you know. Who, yes, and who I, I saw him right? in the show, and he took me backstage. Yeah. Right. I mean, just, it's amazing to have the courage to go up on a stage yeah. and just belt it out. You yeah. Know? If, there, if there is a job, if, if you can get paid to see Broadway yeah. every day, that I that would be my job. Like I, I'm always seeing posts of you and your parents in Broadway. I mean, it's yeah. just it's just wonderful, and you get a chance. You you know some of the people, right? I mean, or at least yeah. you've seen them several times. Yeah, so. I mean, I mean, a, my favorite show currently. I have to plug them. Yes. Is a, called Anne Juliet. Um, I've seen that show a, more times than I care to admit. Right. Um, and I so I've gotten to know. I go. I always go to the stage door. I always love getting autographs on the playbills, and I've right. and talking with the performers. And some of the cast from that show do follow me on Instagram, and we have nice conversations. So a, that's just that's one that I love. Who are your favorite bo Broadway uh, players? It's so it's so hard to <laughs> choose. Um, I mean, the the lead girl from that show who just left this past weekend, actually, or two weeks ago, uh, Lorna Courtney, is one of the my my favorite singers on Broadway. Yeah. She has a phenomenal voice. And so there, there's, there's so many. I know, it's just. The, the, there's so many shows and so many new ones coming. Like, there's so many pe good, amazing people. But it's such a heartbreak. I mean, it can be a heartbreaking situation. Like, with Brandon when his show closed. Yeah. I mean, you could see, you know, you could see the light yeah. at the end of the tunnel that you've reached the health and then yeah. it closes. It, it, like, you, you just, that's the thing with Broadway. Like, you just never know. Right. Like, if it's going to find its audience or right. if it's, it's not. And it doesn't necessarily speak to the quality of the show right it just it's some shows are just like they they latch on to that to the the crowd and they draw people in some just struggle to find it and uh, a friend i'm not going to mention the name because of what happened but he had a commitment to work on the michael jackson uh you know a musical and i mean and that was pre-covid mm. and then when over the time that they actually put it on stage, uh, that commitment just faded away and they uh -huh. lost the, the gig. And it's got to, I mean, that person's still working in the industry, does a lot of uh, voiceover work. Uh -huh. But it's, you know, I mean, if you're a, an actor, a stage actor who has command and talent, you know, it's just, uh, it's got to be heartbreaking. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, but like, um, there's there's so there there's so many new shows always coming, and there there's all there's always more opportunities. Right. If it's not if it's not this one, it, it'll be the next one. See, but you know, I I agree. Yeah. Especially if you're young. Yeah. Once you get to, I mean, like I, I look at my life sometimes, you know, and I'm going to be 69 on my next birthday, so I'm always thinking that you know, like. This is it, yeah. you know, but it's never it. There's yeah. always something, but I'm not, my, my, 
you know, what I'm going for is things that are much easier to get than yeah. Broadway. Yeah. But, um, you know, it gets tougher, you know, as time goes on, especially like if you're a young person and you're struggling to be an actor or a singer or something like that, and you might have a family or you might have this or that. Right. Yeah. It's, it's I, very difficult to be committed. That, to, I mean, it takes a special type of person to have that kind of commitment. Yeah, I, I know a, a, several people my age who are trying to ma make it and they go to auditions and they, they're struggling to, hey, th I, I, they've gotten some off-Broadway or like national right. work, but it's, it is hard to make it's it in, in New York. And even when I was in Hollywood, I mean, I go back, you know, I, I haven't gone back, but I keep in touch with some of the people that I was friends with who was trying to become actors or trying to get a name. And they're kind of like stuck. The people who are still doing it, they just, you know, they never got beyond a certain point of development, mm -hmm. you know, because they're still either, whatever the reason is, they just never got beyond a certain level of success. And, um, and they didn't have, they have no families, you know. They, it's like they committed themselves to make this move and they never went beyond it. So one mm -hmm. thing I'm happy about is that I left Hollywood and came to, to Larchmont, yeah. you know, to yeah. LMC TV. Yeah. And, and now you get to do things because you love to do it. Right. You know, like shows like this or a right. acting in my show. It's just, right. yeah. it's something you enjoy so, yeah. doing. Right. You, no matter what terrible talent I have, I could still do it. I, <laughs> I do it for the fun of it. That's yeah. the whole thing. I, I, and, and that's what life is about, especially at this stage of the When right. you're retiring, you know, in your, the, the latter third, the last third of your life, yeah. you want to have things that you want to enjoy doing. And I enjoy the way to go. And I, I enjoyed working with you all these years. And I, I've enjoyed watching you grow into such a wonderful young man with a fantastic future, a wonderful family. You know, it, it's not always like that, you know? I mean, yeah. some people have it a lot. I, some people don't have the supportive family, you know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, yeah. so it all goes to back, you know, again, bravo to your parents. I yeah. mean, uh, wait, wait, really wait. great people. Yeah, we're very fortunate that we live in the area that we live in, and yeah. that I. I'm I mean, there's, there's privilege associated with it. Yeah, there's no question about it. Yeah, and also, you know, like again, like it's it's there's a cushion. Yeah. For the terrible things that are happening outside, yeah. Larchmont. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, I, uh, I, the, this is a a very good community to be in, and yeah, and I have like the best. Parents and ever. also one of the reasons why it's such a good community is because you're part of it, oh. and it's the truth. There's no, no question about it. Again, my father loved you. I love you. I think you're a great kid. Thank you, you. You'll always be a great kid to me, <laughs> even though you're yeah. a man now. Yeah. Uh, you have great parents, and I, I really appreciate everything you did for me in terms of making The Way to Go special and scriptless and having me on, on, on Rascal. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, ultimately, there's really, there's really just one thing left to say. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. <laughs>